Welcome back, Chubsters. Well, what's happening this week? You can see from the intro footage, the harness has arrived. Good news. Good news about the harness is, it is indeed a double XL. It's pretty wide. It almost sit two people uh, on that seat. It's that wide. Uh, it's taller as well from top to bottom. So I think that's going to give me uh, some clearance of the paramotor as well. If you remember rightly from the video about being too fat for my Nirvana, I'll stick a card up there somewhere for you to have a look at. Um, I couldn't get out of the paramotor seat. I think this time, uh, because the, the paramotor is bigger, I'm not going to have a problem. Haven't hung in it yet. I'm going to do that shortly, uh, but it's looking pretty good so far. Uh, what's not so good is uh, it's wider, it's taller, but they don't seem to have made the waist strap any bigger. That's a bit of an oversight, Nirvana. The waist strap's still incredibly tight on me, don't like that. It wouldn't have taken much to make that six inches longer. So that's the, the Nirvana harness, fantastic. So what have I done next? Uh, I've had to rebuild the paramotor. Uh, it's been disassembled, uh, as you know, for transport from Australia. The fuel was drained out of it, so I've had to refill it with fuel. Who, who, can, who can drink oil? Jerry can. Jerry can. <laughs> <laughs> I put the new harness on it, put the new prop on it. Um, again, not had a prop on this since I damaged the old one on the video where I had a bit of a bum landing. Well, not quite a bum landing, more of a bum takeoff. Uh, check out that video too. I'll stick a card up for that one. Uh, the Paramount has not actually been started since that video. That was the last time we started it. You, you'll remember we had a few paramotor starting issues because the battery was flat. The paramotor has not really been run a great deal since then, uh, so the battery was still flat. We did take a few pulls, but we managed to get it started okay. Testament to Nirvana and reliability. Uh, didn't have many issues, soon got it started. You just have to make sure you prime it fully on a Nirvana, uh, get drips dripping out of the carburetor and all that lot. Um, and off she went. Another negative about the harness though, I will say Nirvana, is he didn't provide any carabiners with the harness. I don't know whether that's normal. I was kind of expecting them because on the point of sale material you seem to have carabiners on the harness. Uh, and I was looking forward to two brand new ones because the old carabiners, I don't know much of the, the history of those. It's a second hand paramotor. Uh, Fritz, that was a previous owner, he probably knows more about the history but I have no idea whether these previous carabiners have actually been dropped or uh, you might have sustained any damage. They look good, but I know it's a security thing and I know it's all up here in the brain, but I'd feel a lot happier knowing that I've got two brand new carabiners. They didn't come with it, so I'm having to order some online. I've just put a posting on, uh, on the Paramotor Facebook page at the moment, trying to find out uh, what carabiners people recommend. I'll get two new ones of those get those attached and we're good to go. Uh, next will be hanging just to make sure we're okay. Uh, I did make that statement before how important it is to hang in this and then hopefully we're uh, we're off. We're kind of ready for foot launching. Uh, but what else has happened? Well you know I've got a friend who's kind of just getting into paramotoring He's not that keen on foot launching. Uh, you'd think he would be, he's a lot fitter than me, but he's very keen on the idea of a trike. So he wanted to go and have a look at a, at a paramotor trike that was for sale, not too far away from where I live here in Spain. He's visiting at the moment from Canada, uh, but he's hoping to sort of put some roots down out here in Spain himself. Uh, I think he's looking forward to semi-retiring too. So uh, we went out to have a look at this paramotor. So what time are we going tomorrow? We're leaving at 12 o'clock. This is a one hour, 52 minute drive. Okay, so that's again. In between what we've just drunk. So I think if it takes one hour and 52 minutes, on Google Maps, which overestimates the trip. 
strip 12 CT. We have to be there at 2. That kind of means that we have to sit off at 12 or 8 to get there. <laughs> You're right now. <here. laughs> I bet it's going to be really, really good, or it's going to be really, really shit. Well, I hope it isn't really, really good, otherwise, I'm going to have to sabotage it. Because the other thing is in the farmer's field. And that's not good. It's not in the farmer's field. It's in the bloody cow shed. It's not in the cow shed. What cow shed? Where did you see the cow shed? It's in the, it's in the, in the middle of a very muddy looking field. I don't think this thing's flown no. for so a long time. Now is we need to cut now to the cow shed. Cut to the cow shed. So we come to look at Steve's paramotor. We're going to a field of flight. Oh, it's cold. I'm freezing. It's fucking freezing. Steve thought it was exactly what he was looking for and decided to make a purchase. We had to negotiate a little bit. There was a few errors in the listing. We had to negotiate for the trailer, and uh, um, but we, we kind of got a good deal. Uh, problem is now, uh, it's left to this fat dude here to uh, to test this, this tri-cam. Came with a wing, a Naha, is it? Uh, pronounced N-A-J-A. Uh, I forget the name of the wing. I did Google the wing. It's not listed as a beginner wing. Uh, it does actually say on the site that it requires somebody with a little bit more experience to fly it. Um, that's not me. And it's certainly not Steve neither. We unpacked the wing. We shook it out. It's got several patches on it. Um, I'm fairly sure it's easy to patch a wing, but it's not the fact that it's patched. It's the fact that it's had that much use. It's had to have several patches in several different places. Uh, makes me worried about how many hours it's got on it. The previous owner wasn't sure himself. Um, look, you know, we're not that desperate that we are about to try and fly on a wing with unknown history, with unknown hours, that looks like it's pretty tired. So that's becoming a ground handling wing, uh, and more specifically a ground taxiing wing. So if we decide to chop up a wing in the propeller of the trike, that's the wing to chop up. So, uh, but other than that, it's, it's not too bad. The motor was a little bit sort of dirty and didn't look like it had been given the TLC that some of you guys out there like to give you paramotors and probably me as well. So we're going to get it cleaned up, but it does run pretty well. Starts on the first pull when you work out how to prime it. Um, but it did take us a while to figure out the prime. A lot lost in translation. The guy was Spanish who sold us the paramotor. My Spanish is not the best. You know, I speak a little bit, but, you know, past ordering a few beers and, and things like that, um, it starts to get a little bit sticky. But we did figure out the priming procedure. It seems that a few of the paramotors use a similar uh, carburetor. Um, it was a bit weird because the bleed uh, pin, if you like, that I'm used to, pressing a pin, on the paramotors I've used with my training while you squeeze the bulb or just pressing a priming bulb uh, which you do with my Nirvana 
this thing you actually poked a little bit of plastic up through a hole in, in the bottom into the diaphragm uh, to bleed out the carburetor. I figured that out after scratching my head for quite a while and trying to Google around the internet. But all sorted, paramotor starts beautifully, seems to develop power. I'm not convinced it quite thrusts as hard as what my Nirvana does, but difficult to tell. It's on a trike and not stuck on your bike, uh, but it seemingly revs up and uh, revs up clearly without any stutters or any bangs, without chucking out any smoke. So it looks good. It looks like it's going to be down to me to uh, to do the test flight, and I'm pleased to be able to do that. So it helps me a little bit. It's going to help me get off the ground a little bit quicker, get me flying again, um, get this sorted out. Uh, for Steve, who's now in the process of learning to fly, he's at the ground handling stage. So he's been down to the beach with me a few times. I'm a little bit worried about the roadster, about whether, you know, I should have got a wing that had got a bit more lift in it. I'm down at the beach. I'm worried. The reason for that is I've been ground handling this wing. Um, I can handle this wing pretty well now. I can reverse launch it, keep it in the air. I can transition to a forward run. I can run the length of the field or at least until my chest, till I get the chest pain. Uh, and I've run kind of with some gusto down that field without my paramotor on my back, running into a bit of a wind. And I haven't felt like the, the wings really lifting me in the harness at all. So I am worried about, you know, whether I'm going to have the uh, the ground speed or not to get this roadster going into the air. I am pretty loaded on it. It's rated, I think, up to 190 kilograms Um and, you know, me with the paramotor on my back and fuel is right at the top end of that. You know, I'm 100 and let's say I'm 145, 150 with clothes. Um, you add this 30 to 35 kilogram paramotor, that's 185. Give or take a bit with the fuel, we're right up there. Uh, so I am worried, but... You know, the only way is to suck it and see. I'm going to get down there. I'm going to try and get down there in a good 15 kilometer per hour uh, wind and see what happens. Got to hang in it first, though. Don't forget the hanging. So that's basically it. So we're right at the crux of things. Now, in case you haven't noticed, the house behind me, well, it's not the usual, not that you're used to the usual. Um, it's a bit of a happy birthday there. It's my daughter's 17th birthday. I'm actually visiting my other daughter back in the UK at the moment. And I'm going to do some work this week while I'm here. Uh, earn a few more pennies. Uh, when I get back next week, uh, we'll be up and at it again. Steve's quite keen to see his paramotor trike fly. I'm going to be the dude to do it. And I'm also going to see what we can do about the foot launching. So until then... Thank you for hanging in there. It's all starting to happen now. Been a bit of a delay. I know I've been floating around the world a little bit. Uh, it's not been the greatest of periods of my life to get on with paramotoring, with all the moving, but we're getting settled now and we're getting to it. So thank you for sticking with it. Um, if you like these kind of videos, then don't forget to subscribe. Thank you again to all the subscribers. Thank you for the wonderful support. I've made a lot of friends here now, know a lot of people, get a lot of great advice. Don't forget to click that bell icon. Uh, that way you get notifications of the videos. Subscribing isn't enough. Clicking the bell icon will get you notifications. You'll see when there's another Fat Paramotor Guy video uh, hitting the, the internet. And um, if you're watching this on Facebook as well, don't forget to like, follow all that jazz. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Bye for now. <laughs>